Before the modular home series started, I was working on getting my ram pump installed. And my idea originally, about two and a half years ago, was to make this box that would then uh, supply water as a source. But it's obviously not doing a very good job. So today I'm going to be exploring a new idea that will hopefully fix this problem. So let's get started. Some of the flaws that I'm realizing are the water level is up here, which is great, but uh, the inside of the flume liner here seems to be decently well waterproofed uh, with that, uh, I guess it's a shower drain, but the inside is not. So water is just going up under that uh, rubber and coming out the bottom, as you can see down here. So, and you know, it's just staying wet all the time. So my thoughts are, remove this box completely. And uh, I'm gonna show you what I've got in mind for the replacement. Remember this bucket that was used to test out the U-siphon? Well, I thought, why not use this bucket, since it's already got a hole in the bottom that could be used as a silt filter. Because um, that's another problem with this box over here is that silt is filling it up and stopping the pump. So I thought, you know, I could have this piece down here, just yank it off, drain the silt out, but then have the pump feed from up here, uh, the flume feed from up here, and the pump pull from a little bit lower, and I still have some room for silt to build up before the pump stops. So it may take a couple of rains and uh, the creek flooding out before it'll stop the pump. So first of all, it's time to remove this wooden box. I'm gonna turn the flume off here. Hopefully, yeah, this wood's, there we go, and okay. that stops the flume. Definitely not a very waterproof solution here. So I'm gonna drain out the rest of this by opening up this uh, union here. Hopefully. <laughs> so much silt in there. I would say there's two inches or better of silt. All right, so I brought the drill here. And I'm just gonna start pulling these screws out to remove this box. Huh, wonder if that one's busted off in there. All right, so that's fairly loose already. Must have been some of that Blue Max because just pushed a little bit more and it came popping off of there. So that's good. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna just toss this box to the side for now and we will consider what to do with the rest of this here. So I'm really hoping that yeah, this is a two inch opening. Yep, sure is. So there's some rubber in there. Hopefully we'll uh, cinch down on this pipe and make a good seal. Okay, I wanna see how well this two inch pipe will stick into this shower piece here. Uh, uh, pretty good. I'm not sure if it's totally waterproof, but it certainly is in there. Now to get from the two inch pipe into the bucket, I've only got a one and a quarter unisil here. And so I'm gonna have to use a few pieces that I found to get down to one and a quarter. They didn't have the exact part I needed at the hardware store, so um, I'm gonna try this now, and if it doesn't leak, I'll leave it. If it does leak, I'll come back and use some uh, cement on it. So 
I'm thinking if I cut this pretty close in here, about right there, then uh, it is, we won't need much of this pipe. Okay, I got this little piece cut down. Let's see about getting this stuffed in here. Sadly, this rubber gasket keeps moving to the side, but I can't get this thing off to fix it. I wonder if I could just hold it up. Maybe that did it. <clears throat> okay, we'll see if that is waterproof enough for our application. So now, gotta find out how much space I need between there and here for the next uh, component. So let's see. I mean, honestly, if I just go with like a three inch piece, I think will be more than enough to get this in here. So let me cut that down real quick. Okay, here's this little piece here. Just gonna get it stuck in there. Now, for the part that I've been looking forward to, and that is getting the unisil on here. So I'm thinking about using this 4x4 as a support down here. I have to arrange that so that this piece will sit up high enough. May have to have two of them, it looks like. But I want, let's see if you can see that or not, but drill a hole into the bucket right here at the uh, top so that we can use as much of the bucket as possible. The one and a quarter size unisil needs a two inch hole. So that's what I've got here. So I'm just gonna plop this right here towards the top and carefully, slowly drill this hole in. Okay, that ought to do it. Have to be careful when you drill through these buckets like this because you could uh, crack them. So, clean these edges up just a hair. I like free buckets like this. Okay, so with the unisil, I'm just going to Plop this thing right in here. Let me start that one first. Kind of a tight fit in there. Okay, very good. And now, let's attach this to our pipe piece. When I built the flume, I had some leftover chunks of this uh, four by four from the legs, so. I think that's what's going to be used here as the support for this. So let's make kind of a little ledge there. And okay, so now I'm just going to get this unisil in here. So to attach this, I'm going to kind of get that pipe wet a little bit. Sometimes it's helpful to have some soap or detergent, which I didn't bring any down here, but just get those seals wet. And now I'm just gonna pick this up and start pushing. Hopefully get this to go in. May have to file down this edge a little bit. Uh, yeah, okay. Let me get the file real quick and kind of peel this edge down some because it's just so difficult 
to push these bigger unisills in here. I found a file and also found some dish liquid. So maybe I can get this on here now. Doesn't take a whole lot of filing down. Just gonna kinda get the edges off a little bit. So I know I've said this many a time before, but you've gotta try out these Unisil if you do any kind of water pipe to tank kind of projects. Uh, I've got a link to them down in the description. I've probably used these things, oh gosh, 15 or more times various projects. They're just great. Six grueling hours later I got this on here. <laughs> it wasn't really that long. So uh, I'm gonna go open up the flume down here and uh, get water in the bucket just to see how well it uh, works. So you watch this and I'll be right back. Okay I'm back. All right so better get these blocks put back in here. To bring the water level up some. So what I do is I use these wooden blocks here just to uh, kind of bring the height of this rubber up a little bit and that helps water to back up into the intake here. Starting to get somewhere there. I am still seeing some leaks, sadly, up under here. Right there. But we'll see what we can do about that later on. Nice. I'm liking that. And one thing I'm going to be seeing here is that uh, this little extra pipe I put on here is not tall enough to uh, get the level we need. Because what I mainly want to see here is if this is stopped up, will the water level stop here at a certain point before it overflows? Let's see what we get. Yeah, right about there looks pretty good. So it stopped. And so later on, when I have this piece, I might even put just a ball valve down here at the bottom so I can drain any silt out of here. That's the thought at least. I was just looking at my uh, drain down here and thought, why not just use another piece of pipe like this? and then just put a uh, cap on here. Not glue it down, but just uh, have it so that I could just pop it off real quick. And that would uh, drain this. And no need for a ball valve, and no need for this weird extra pipe piece. So I think I'll do that. Now, I want to use a one inch unisil um, a little bit further down here than this one, maybe like midway. and. I'm going to try to eliminate all of this weird stuff and just go straight one inch pipe to the old one inch pipe we had. So I'm going to get this new uh, unisil installed. So let's see where this wants to go naturally. Yeah, so I think we can go right here and be just fine. And that still gives several inches for that uh, silt. I'm just gonna get this unisil in here and I'll have to go to the store sometime in the next couple of days and buy the pipe and also uh, I may do a union in here anyway just one inch so that it uh, can be easily detached if need be so get this one inch piece put in here wonder what the record is for number of unisil into a single bucket. We've got three here. 
I went to the hardware store and found some one inch pipe and also another one of these uh, adapters here. That way I can install a union and uh, easily disconnect things if I need to. So let's see if I can get this piece off of here and get this union on here. So, with this pipe, it doesn't have to be a very long piece, just long enough to get from the union into the bucket here. So, uh, let's just go, I guess, right about here. I'm going to cut that down with the hacksaw. Let's see. Now, this end I've already filed down to make it easier to install, so on this end, where I'm going to put this uh, coupling. Okay, let that sit for a moment and then we will get this installed. While we wait on that cement to do its thing, I found a three quarter inch cap in my car. So I'm just gonna cap the bottom of this pipe. And that way, whenever I need to, I can just pull that off and drain the silt out of this bucket. If it uh, ever comes to that. Here we are again, trying to get a pipe into a unisill here. Hopefully this one's a little bit easier. Normally the smaller the size, Mm, the quicker it'll go in. Okay. Seems to be going. Now I just gotta push this far enough that it'll get close for that union there. Okay. Better get this attached before I push too far in there. Needs to come back still a little more in there. Mm. Let's see what we got. Almost, but not quite there. I got the pipe installed here. Seems to be nice and secure. But uh, there is still that little leak coming out from the uh, shower drain here that I was really unable to stop. So what I'm going to do is take some of this old rubber and I'm going to uh, try and get it up under here so that it'll just, uh, just get the water this direction and not go up under the flume. So let's see what I can do here. Okay, so that should just allow it to come this direction. If it's too steep, I'll just get maybe a rock or something under there and get it to uh, stick up better. But we'll give it a try here, see what happens. All right, well, I believe it's time to turn on the flume and see what we get. All right, here comes the water. Let's see what we get here. Looks like our diversion leather piece is working well. So the water is entering in here and filling up in here. And then that piece of leather that was, in, not leather, but uh, rubber, is uh, diverting that extra bit of water down here. 
And the water level has reached the top here, still about four inches or so um, above or below the bucket. So we should be good. Let me go turn on the ram pump and we'll see if this water is able to keep up with the pump. Now, because there was so much silt in the pump, I'm gonna uh, take this off here and uh, drain it all. So I feel like it's gotten, uh, gotten pretty stopped up here. Okay. I'm turn this on and drain the pipe real quick. Well, it was actually surprisingly uh, clean. I'm gonna go through the process of getting this thing primed here. So ideally, the uh, water coming in would stay at the high level and the, uh, the low level would never be an issue. But I'm afraid the pump is sucking down more than uh, is going in. So I'm gonna have to alter the way that uh, this is turned, I believe, to see if I can get more water to go down there. Listen to that pop. I placed a couple of rocks in the flume to slow the water down, and now it's keeping up nicely here. So I think that's gonna do it. Now there may be an issue whenever uh, a storm comes. It's going to uh, cause some problems with silt and sticks and leaves and all that. So mm -hmm. I'm sure it'll be a constant clean out, but uh, at least it's working now. See that irregularity in the ram pumps uh, cycling? That has to do with pulling air into the drive pipe. So I was searching for the cause of that, and I found it. <laughs> I found it right here. Um, when I was installing this, I didn't know just how well it was going to do, so I did not cement. Oh, pump just stopped. So right here, see the... Uh, that little dirt line that uh, kind of shows where the uh, the pipe was right there. Well, that's the problem. It's uh, cycled so hard that it's pulled that loose. So I need to come back and cement all of these joints together to um, keep that from happening. Thank you for watching this video. I believe that we have found a much better solution to the intake than uh, this old box down here. So from what I can tell, when the pump is running, it uh, maintains the top level up here, which means it's filling up faster than the ram pump is pulling water out. So very exciting. Now I'm gonna come back through here and um, put cement on all these joints, and uh, we'll do some more testing to see how high the uh, pump can go and what kind of volume we're getting up top. So stay tuned for those videos. Thanks for watching. I'm Seth Johnson with Land a House. Remember to hit that thumbs up button to help my videos in the YouTube ranking. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.